Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-52. Our last episode found our adventurers heading to and arriving at an old farmhouse where the bandit leader Cornwall had murdered the captain of the watch. The party came under missile fire and a portion were caught in a net trap in the woods. Farkas Stoutheart and the waif Karina charged towards the house and also came under fire from crossbow bolts. Separated, the two attempted to enter the building and find the murderer. Fargus thought he had observed the man, but he was surprised as Cornwall peppered the ranger from a hole in the ceiling. Before being able to end Fargus's life, Karina arrived, and between the two of them, Cornwall was defeated and breathes no more. We rejoin the group as the ranger is being tended to. Sit still, damn it! I'm trying to heal you, said an agitated Sister Elaine. Magic coursed through her hands as the healing spirit transferred into the ranger's body. Cabe had already pulled several bolts from the large man's body, but the holes left behind quickly shrank up from the magical healing. Pain filled, then evaporated on the ranger's face as the healing took hold. Heaving deeply, he nodded to the cleric, thanking her. Cabe tapped on his shoulder and held up the bloody bolts that had nearly ended Fargus's life. Uh, you gonna want these? He quipped, with a smile crossing his face. I hate you, sighed Fargus as a grin broke over his face. That was Karina. The cleric and the bard looked over their shoulder and nodded, stating that she would be okay. The group formed up and confirmed that Fargus would also be okay. He then stated that he thought he saw another person running right to left before he was attacked. Karina spoke up, stating that it was probably her attempting to find a way through the debris field. There's a lot of stuff here, she said. A light spell was completed by Lady Irena and illuminated the ruined house. Looking around, the group noticed that this must have been a storehouse for the bandit's ill-gotten gains. They quickly cleared the building and confirmed that no other hostiles were present. Coming back together in the center of the building, they noticed that Bulger had found a small wooden trunk that he was having difficulty carrying. The noise as he moved indicated that a significant amount of coins were present in the box. Fargus had gotten back to his feet and was examining the crossbow of speed intently. Keep it. You earned it, remarked Lady Irena, and the ranger nodded in agreement, slinging it over his shoulder. What did you find, Bulger? asked the bard. The word payday was the response, followed by the notice it was locked. Benson the guard moved over to the dead body of Cornwall and searched him, finding a small brass key. As he flipped it, Bulger the gnome plucked it out of the air and inserted it into the trunk. A twist gave an audible click and the container opened easily. The light spell cast illuminated the contents, revealing a significant amount of coins and small gems in the box. Lady Irena spotted an anomaly and reached into the container. Moving some coins, she pulled forth a copper scroll tube and opened it as the others were pouring through the vast wealth in front of them. The mage gave an audible shriek of happiness as she discovered two more spells that she could use within the container. Pointing out that they were enchantments and that only she could use them, the old others told her that she could keep it. Karina joined with the group in the examination of the contents and pulled forth a silver ring with feathers etched into it. Slipping it on, she found that it fit her hand perfectly. She smiled before tossing it back into the pile. Bulger looked quizzically at her and asked her if there was a problem with the ring. She pointed out that it fit, but she just didn't want to take items. The others looked at her and then back to the ring. Chuckling, Sister Elaine examined the jewelry and pointed out that it would only fit the wave and she should take it. Karina smiled meekly and put it back on her finger. Fargus stopped the group and pointed out that they needed a plan. Benson admitted that he wanted his fellow guardsmen to be returned to Colby, as well as the body of Cornwall. Everyone agreed, and each took different tasks. Fargus, Cabe, and Lady Irena 
would return to the grove and retrieve the horses. Sister Elaine and Benson would retrieve the two horses in front of the farmhouse, as well as the body of Morak, the guardsman. Karina and Bolger were assigned to find anything of value in the farmhouse and collect it. Everyone moved quickly to handle their tasks and met back up at the front of the farmhouse. Bolger had the locked trunk with the help of Karina, and they had located two more large bags of valuable items. With night falling, the group opted to secure the farmhouse and set out again, Bolger had locked the trunk and, with the help of Karina, had located two large bags of valuable items. With night falling, the group opted to secure the old farmhouse and set out again in the morning. Benson was concerned about traveling at night on the frontier and the others agreed. Rations were located inside the old farmhouse and, while lacking in flavor, it did fill the bellies of the adventurers. After dinner, the group noticed that Karina had moved off by herself and had been unusually quiet. The group discussed options and it was Bolger who finally quelled the discussion and volunteered to go speak with the waif. It's a pretty night. Lots of stars. Reminds me of the open seas, said the squat sailor. Karina continued her silence and a tear was noticed coming down her cheek. Lassie, are you upset at the commander or that kill? The waif sat pensively for a moment and finally admitted that both bothered her. Bolger waited for her to elaborate for a few moments, and later she continued. I, I, I thought that killing Cornwall would make me happy, but it didn't. It didn't change the fact that Eddie is gone. It doesn't help that we have coins or baubles. It just doesn't seem to matter that this man is dead and that his evil cannot be undone. It just doesn't seem fair. She gazed at the gnome who smiled at her and held her shoulders close to him. Patting her on the back, he allowed her to weep openly for a few minutes before pushing her back slightly. It doesn't seem fair, and to the watch commander, or to his friends, or to the people of Colby, it never will be. She looked at him annoyed that his answer didn't make her feel better, but he winked at her. What's done is done. You cannot change the past no matter how hard you try. But Cornwall's death does matter. You did something good. Do you think you would have stopped killing or thieving? Bolger shook his head and smiled at the girl. No, he wouldn't have. So what we did here, what you did today, matters to the people he didn't get to kill or rob. And that is the important thing. A bad man died here. We won't mourn his death as we will the captain or the other guard, but his death matters because his reign is over. The world is a better place because he is dead. You did a good thing today, Karina. The woman slumped back into Bulger's chest and sobbed openly. As he held her, he whistled a low tune until she fell asleep from exhaustion. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.